that I am as established in God, but I won't consciously experience the benefits until I realize really who I am and bring it into my every attitude, my every expectation, my every action. We have statements, right action, you know, right thinking leads to right feeling, leads to right action. We live in harmony with the divine in all our ways, all right? So, so now maintaining our consciousness, and we know that we have discussed release, faith, acceptance, right expectancy. That is the very thing that happens for us all the time. We say, well, you know, God, I want a new dress. So you walk down the street, dress up here. Where did that come from? Your consciousness of it. And there was no denial. So we want to look up, not down, not at the appearances. We don't say, oh, there's only five fish. What can I do? We want to say, my kingdom is infinite and these shall be more than sufficient. And our consciousness rules the numbers, you see? Our consciousness is ruler of our world. So, and then, this is so significant, he had the people sit down in divine order. You know, they weren't looking, he had them sit down in divine order in groups to receive. So this is the whole process. We ask, we affirm our relationship, our divine right. There was no question. Jesus didn't say, I am one I'm worthy. No, he's the royal son and he knows it. And you must know it. And, you know, so come, so keep that sequence in mind. When you're going after something that you love, remember your entitlement and don't forsake whatever, any good that you should have, you should have. Okay? And ask. Practice receiving. Practice the sequence within your inner body so that you get in the rhythm of that expectancy and forget about all the naysayers. It's a distraction from what is true. Don't you realize that's just power play? If I can keep you down, I can control you and run you. And originally, all these ideas of lack and limitation were, you know, pretty much just mesmerized into the minds of people. It has nothing to do with the divine reality and everyone's right to be free and to enjoy and to manifest and to ask and to receive. Now, one of the things I just want to say here is that if there's ever such a name as Satan, we know it's not a person, not, it's, but it is a, 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 a toxic energy, would be fear and guilt. So this is why I was saying to you why Christ always said, Jesus said, we say, thy sins are forgiven thee. And he didn't mean, you know, what he meant really is that whatever has gone in, on in the past does not matter. You know, sins are mistakes. They're not crimes. They don't have to be at the level of crimes. They're mistakes of consciousness. So I sin against myself when I think in terms of lack or limitation, don't I? You know, and that sin means missing the mark. It's an archery term, originally, right? But, so, he, he taught us compassion. He, he demonstrated compassion. Even to the criminal on the cross, he said, this day you shall be with me in heaven. Not you're going to have to go pay penalties and so on. So why do we have forgiveness and why must we use it all the time? Releasing the past, forgiving the past, forgetting it, becoming innocent again, letting go, so that we will allow ourselves to prosper, to move forward. If we harbor guilt, if we harbor fear of any sort, guilt and fear, we will sabotage ourselves and will not allow ourselves to prosper. So Jesus came to free, not to imprison. He said, God doesn't care what you've done, you know. So long as you change your consciousness now, you may have the kingdom. And we have story after story of the compassion. Even the devil, or so-called, you know, let's say that aspect of ourselves draws its power, draws its power from on high. And God would be very well pleased if he would have a transformation. <laughs> so, and so would we. But you see, this is the high consciousness of love, and so it doesn't get any great kicks out of, you know, uh, someone being punished. They, the high consciousness desires a transformation. So, and that all children come home. And, you know, briefly, to show you the willingness of the divine to give to you, to release the glories unto you, 
you have, you know, people coming in to work, you know, in the field, the laborers in the field. So you have some coming at 10 a.m. and they work till 11 p.m. They get a cer paid a certain amount. You have others coming in at 10 p.m. working one hour and being paid the same amount. So it doesn't matter what time you arrive in consciousness. The kingdom is still yours. And the, the father or love is happy to give it to you. There is no relishing in staying in punishment, restriction, because your life is God's life. Why? The universe cannot act against itself. So Jesus taught this great compassion and the great willingness of the divine. Once we have free, when can I be free from whatever? When I have freed myself. And we can help each other to be free by letting each other know we hold nothing against that. You know, we know who you are. We don't hold anything against that. This is a perfect universe. God has demonstrated perfection. We live in paradise now, but we must know it to be able to uh, feel there is nothing imperfect in our universe. Now, I just wanted to, um, you know, so know that about manifestation, your rights, your rights to the kingdom. You've been taught you don't have rights. You don't have rights. You have to fight for your rights. No such thing. You just have to know, know. And one with the truth is a majority. So you will, you know, the mountains will melt before when you live in the line of truth, declaring your own that is yours by divine right, then nothing can prevent that. And I, I just like to finish with where we're going. You know, Jesus demonstrated, I'll tell you this story, about there was a woman, and this has to do with the power of our thought and where we're headed as a society, the capacities that we're headed into that there was a, uh, he finished talking in Galilee, and he was meditating after the talk, he was sitting, and he felt something. He felt somebody needed something. And there was a woman, you know, who was very, very sick and was laid out on a couch. This is from the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus. I really, really recommend this book if you want to hear the true law that he really taught, okay? And she was laid out on this couch, and she couldn't speak, she couldn't move, and she knew of his capacities. And so she just mentally sent, sent him, she just thought, you know, please heal me, or whatever she said there. Just the thought. Jesus got the thought. He did not speak back either. He received the thought. And he sent this thought of divine wholeness to her, and she was well. And so someone said, you know, well, you know, wow, you know, healing by thought, wow, you know, wow, you know, that's amazing. He said, no, it isn't. And that everyone has the power to heal yourself and others by pure thought alone, because this is the universe that is based on thought. So what is the highest use of your thought for yourself and for others? You know, actually a ray of light went out as his thought into the body of the other person, okay? So what's fundamental to realize here in the greatest miracles and demonstrations, the resurrection and so on, is that all is thought and thought is in command of everything, including the physical body. And all that the son and daughter of the Most High are to heal, raise the dead. That means any long lost hopes, physically ill people. We, through knowledge of God or the highest consciousness, we have the capacity to raise everything around us. And this is what should be our natural state that we should expect this as natural, okay? Now, I'll just tell you one more story. That, of course, Lazarus is the greatest. The, um, raising Lazarus was the greatest demonstration before he raised himself. And he showed the point that you think you have killed me, body and all, but guess what? Here I am again. I am the resurrection and the life. There's nothing you can do to life, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and that's what we are. So he broke the world illusion by showing the whole pattern of the divine being, by raising himself completely. But how, you know, 
when he raised, this is the thing about, we live in a world, this is a world ruled by spiritual consciousness. Um, and the Lazarus, he said, well, Lazarus isn't dead, he's just sleeping. And he knew all was consciousness. And I am free as consciousness running this body. I am free to lay my body down and to take it up. Because consciousness rules body. If I depart my body, take my consciousness away from it, body's not going to walk around and talk and so on. So the highest, we think we are our bodies, but we are not. We are consciousness that should be in perfect rulership of this body, realizing I can lay it down and I can take it up. I am the resurrection and the life. I am, the truth about me, immortal life. These principles, you get these principles, you will have the whole thing. You will know that life is constantly regenerating itself through you. So I am the resurrection in my life. So what? That old thing didn't work out. I'm the resurrection. I go and I just create something new. I continue. I am the life. I am the whole life where there is no death, all right? This has so much meaning. In your circumstances, the strongest thing you can ever say is, I am the resurrection and the life. Say that over any challenge and say with the full power of God in you, you know, and you will experience the healing. Because that is the truth about you. Everything in nature shows you this. The trees drop their leaves. They have them again in the spring. Life is continuous divine sequence without end, and you are the power. I'll just close with this wonderful, wonderful story. So realize, Jesus himself said, thought is all. My world is ruled by thought. So through thought alone, I can, you know, demonstrate what I want in my life, perform miracles, heal, resurrect all aspirations that have not yet been fulfilled. Everything about spirit has come to be fulfilled. This is the hope. This is the glory. This is the knowledge, the supreme knowledge. All right? So we are, the truth about us is we are that immortal power and immortal life where we are. Carolyn, is it Mays? Mays? Carolyn Mays, I recently saw her, and I just think that this is Mays. such a great... Mace. 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 Yeah, it looks like this, but it's Mace. Um, she told a wonderful story on television. Um, this has to do with all of light and all of thought. There was an accident, and the, uh, the woman um, was in a coma. Okay, by the way, people can be brought out of comas and all this by the spiritual principle. Not because we're power, but because there is power. You know that? So, Carol missed this, you know, there was a very bad accident. The woman was in a coma. And while she was in the coma, laid out on the street, wherever it was, while, you know, while the, everybody was arriving, she went out of her body. Her consciousness left her body and had omniscience, which is our true state also, omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotence. So the spirit, her spirit, started traveling down the line of cars. <laughs> that were, you know, stopped by this accident, right? So the line of cars, she was hearing all the dialogue. So there was a person in one car was saying, oh, geez, an accident, I'm going to be late for work. My woman really, you know, why did this have to happen? You know, this is like no compassion whatsoever, no consciousness whatsoever. And just one after the other was the same thing. And this is like the, the carbon of our minds. We wouldn't even want to go near the sentiment. He's so terrible to the divine, right? But so she's going down, and she comes upon a car where there's a woman. She stops, and she hears a woman is praying for her, for her recovery, and praying to the infinite for her recovery and her well-being. And at that very same moment, she said she could see the light shoot from that woman's mind all the way to her body. Now, the light of that thought, which is light, you know, love thoughts are light. They are power. They are light. They're real things. Like Michael was trying to turn this thing on. It's a ray. So it jumped from her into the body of the woman because her motive was sincere. It was divine, you know. And 
it, did, it was later on, um, the woman woke up, you know, came out of the coma, went to the hospital and so on. And while she was in her omniscience, she even got the name of the lady in the car. She didn't seek her afterwards. It was while she was in her omniscience. She got her name and, and maintained the name. So then later on down the line, when she's well, she uh, tracks down this woman, she buys flowers for her, and she brings them to her door, and she says, thank you for being with me in my time of need. So, this is your transcendent power, if you could contemplate upon the greatness of this, of your thought. And I have infinite stories, <laughs> just so many wonderful ones, See, so this is a spiritual universe. We see the matter, you know, the body, the matter, the stuff. I can touch the couch. But do we see into this universe? Do we see what's really happening? You know? So when you think your thought is a, is a being of divine intelligence that is going somewhere doing something, all right? So we always want it to be achieving what we would imagine to be the divine purpose at any time. That you know, which is good, holds the same purpose. So, I'm going to have to let you go now. And I just very much give thanks for everyone being here today to my wonderful practitioners. And what well, there's no other teacher that makes such demands as I do, <laughs> and they do so great. So, so Marie, Dorothy, and and Margaret, thank you for your superb work. I know that the masters are applauding you, so I just really thank you for all that consciousness. I thank everyone who is here, and I know that everyone, as a result, that you did hear what you needed to hear today, to bring forth a great new level of divine good, perfect good for yourself. To bring forth a great new level of the divine idea of good for you. That means the most lustrous perfect, wonderful idea that all the power of the universe supports you in this liberty. So be it.